Let's introduce Hebrew prefixes, starting with the definite article and the Vav conjunction. Let's go. Previously, we have gone over the Aleph beat, the alphabet. We've gone over Hebrew vowels. We've gone over how to pronounce words, and we've introduced nouns. It's time we begin to introduce additional features of Hebrew words. And one of the stock features of Hebrew is the prefix. In Hebrew, words will attach to other words. So we do this in English. Uh, it's not the same thing. Uh, but you can imagine, for example, again, not the same thing, but close. You have contractions, right? Uh, I can't. C-A-N apostrophe T. We've combined two words into one. So in Hebrew, uh, it's a bit more fluid than that. Uh, when it comes to the definite article, which means the word the, it simply attaches a hey at the beginning of the word. When it comes to the Vav conjunction, it simply attaches the Vav to the beginning of the word. And so you really have to know your nouns, you have to know your vocabulary, and you have to be able to recognize these prefixes. And that's what today's lesson is all about. So what is the definite article? We talked about it being the word the. It adds a definiteness to the noun in question. Instead of king or a king, melek, we have Hamelik, the king. It's specific. It's definite. There's no question about which king we're talking about. Best example could be if we have a series of kings. A king, a king, a king. Ah, the king. It adds a different flavor, right? So that's what we're talking about today. The definite article. When you don't have the definite article, you can translate it one of two ways. The noun or a noun, indefinite, a king instead of the king. So when you don't have the definite article, Hebrew does not have an indefinite article like English does. So you have to determine from context, are you going to supply the indefinite article or not? The definite article is the hey prefix. There are several patterns. One pattern is hey, pathak, dagash, forte. Now, the way Hebrew adds the uh, definite article, it's a hey plus a pathak, and then in the next consonant, a dagash, forte. Now, the most important feature of this syntax is simply the hey. The vowels can change. The dagash, forte can be a little wonky. So the thing to remember, the constant in all situations is the presence of the hey. Remember, it's an added hey. So when you see your word and you, rec you remember your vocabulary, you'll notice, wait, what's this hey doing here? Ah, that is probably the definite article. So look at Navi, prophet, or a prophet. To add the definite article, it becomes Hanavi. You can see the He plus the Pathak, and then you can see the Dagesh Forte. Look at Zakain, which means an, uh, an elder or elder. How do I remember that one? Zakain is in the corner. You need a cane for the elder. Go get Zakain. Zakain is in the corner. Okay. That's how I remember that one. How do you remember it? Tell me in the comments down below. When you add the definite article, it becomes Hazakain. Well, I'm saying my accent incorrectly. Hazakain. Again, hey, pathak, dagesh forte. Instead of sus, horse, or a horse, you have hasus, the horse. And again, we have hey, pathak, dagesh forte. We have Shofet, a judge or judge. And then you have Hashofet, the judge. 
Again, hey, Pathak, Dagesh Forte. Now, another pattern, I guess you could say, is dealing with Bagad Kafats. When a Bagad Kafat begins a word like in Bayat, house, remember my mnemonic on that one? When you see a house, buy it. It's still going to be the hey prefix with a Pathak, but then the Dagesh Lene at the beginning in the Bagad Kafat becomes a Dagesh Forte. The difference being Dagesh Lene is a hardening of the vowel or the verb or, or uh, it's a hardening of the consonant. So a, a, a bait is actually v, v, v. You add the Dagesh Lene, it becomes v, v, v. But with a uh, definite article, it becomes a Dagesh Forte. So now it's a doubling. So it's still going to sound like a hard B. But in terms of syllabification, we're splitting it up. Hab, buy it. Hab, buy it. Look at Derek, road or a road. Ha Derek. Look at Gibor, Pagabor, the warrior. So we've seen uh, a couple of patterns. One is the prefix he with a pathak and a dagesh forte. Another is the same thing, really. But when we're dealing with Bagad Kafats at the beginning of the noun, we're changing the Dagesh Lene to a Dagesh Forte. That's the second pattern. There's a third pattern. When it comes to gutturals at the beginning of our noun, remember that the gutturals do not take Dagesh Forte. This in includes Resh. The Pathak in our He prefix has a lengthening or what's called a compensatory lengthening. I call it abla. It's a vowel change. Okay. The pathak will actually lengthen to a comet, the long A sound. So instead of a dogish forte, you, and instead of a pathak, you end up with a comet. So, hey, comets. Ish, man or a man becomes ha ish. Hey, comets. Isha woman or a woman becomes Haisha, the woman. Rosh, head or a head. It becomes Harosh, the head. Ir, city or a city. Ha'ir, the city. Now, when we have a he or het at the beginning of a noun, instead of a compensatory lengthening, there's no lengthening at all. And the dogish forte is dropped. Why? Because there's already a doubling of the he uh, or the he plus het, which kind of looks the same, but they're not right. So just know when, when you have a he or a het, there's no compensatory lengthening and there's no dogish forte doesn't need it. And you still have the path act. Look at he chal. That's the word for palace. To add the definite article, it becomes ha he chal. The palace. Look at Hachoma, the wall. When we have a noun that begins with an ayin comets, he comets, or het comets, where this consonant and vowel are not accented, the definite article replaces the pathak with a segel. Now, the het comets can have an accent for whatever reason. Hebrew's funny. It has rules until it breaks the rules. But all languages are like that, right? Look at Chakam, wise man or a wise man. Adding the definite article, it becomes Hey Chakam. Boy, if you really need to clear your throat, this is the word for you. The wise man. There's another pattern, and this is with words that begin with uh, Yod Shava or Mem Shava. And interestingly enough, there's no dagesh forte, but there's also no abla. There's no uh, compensatory lengthening. So the uh, the pathak remains, but there's no dagesh forte. Look at uh, yiladim, yiladim, uh, boys or young young boys. If you add the definite article, it becomes hi ladim. The boys, Miral, Miraglim, spies. Adding the definite article, it becomes Hamraglim, 
the spies. So what's constant? It's the prefix K. Most of the time you'll see it with a Pathak. Sometimes you'll see it with the Comet. Sometimes you'll see it with a Segel. Many times you'll see it with a Dagesh Forte, but not always. So when you see a prefix He, be thinking, oh, this should be the definite article. Now context will usually help. And one final note, every now and then you'll see the nouns uh, vowels change because of the presence of the definite article. So look at Eretz, Earth, or I guess you could say a Earth technically. Um, with the definite ar article, it becomes Haaretz. So the initial segel becomes a comet, the Earth. Am becomes Haam, but instead of a pathak, it's a comet. Uh, Gan, garden becomes Hagan, the people, but instead of a uh, pathak, it's a comet. Har, mountain, becomes Hahar with comets instead of pathak in both vowels there. Aron, ark, Haaron, the ark, but with comets instead of pathak. So again, recognize the presence of the he prefix. That's the most vital piece. And then be aware that the vowels can be a little bit different. Usually it's a he pathak plus a dagesh forte. And you know, the dagesh forte might not even be there. The question is, can you recognize that there's a definite article? Context will help. And when you see the prefix he, that's a sure sign you're dealing with the definite article. Now let's talk about the conjunction vav or the vav conjunction. What do I mean by that? The word vav is a conjunction. And not only is it a letter, it is a word. It's a prefixed word. Just like the definite article is a prefixed word. It simply attaches to the beginning of a word. And in Hebrew, you know, you're dealing with the conjunction. By conjunction in translation, we mean and, but also even. The Vav conjunction occurs 50,000 times. On average, it occurs at least twice in a single verse. It happens all the time. There are six words in Hebrew that begin with a Vav. They only occur 18 total times in Hebrew. So statistically speaking, when you see Vav at the beginning of a word, you're more than likely going to be looking at the Vav conjunction. More than likely, it is prefixed to a noun. Or you'll see it can uh, prefix to verbs as well. But what I'm saying is, statistically speaking, you're probably looking at the Vav conjunction. The Vav conjunction is Vav plus a uh, Shiva. You tack that on at the beginning of a word as a prefix, like ish, man or a man, it becomes ve-ish, and a man. That's how it usually looks, vav with a shava. The evid and a servant, ve-isha, and a woman, ve-ha-isha, and the woman, ve-ha-ish, and the man. Sometimes the shava will actually change to a shurik. So vav plus the, what looks like a dagesh forte or dagesh lene. That's a shurik, it's a vowel. Ooh. And it, uh, it, there's a couple of different instances of this. The first instance is in bump. Okay, bump stands for uh, bet, mem, pe, bump. The bet is in this case with the Dagesh Lene. Mem is not with any Dagesh. Pe is with Dagesh Lene. Bump. When nouns begin with bump, the Vav will become, instead of a Vav Shava, it'll become a Shurik. Why? It's because the Dagesh, at least in the case of the Beit and the Pe, bumps over from the uh, bet or the pe and moves into the vav. 
the exception here being with the M, the Mem, because it does not have a Dogesh, but it's following the same kind of pattern. Look at Bane, Between, Uvain, and Between. Look at Byet, Uvayet, and a house. Look at Melek, King, or a King, Umelek and a king. Look at Paro, Ufaro, and Pharaoh. There is another instance in which it becomes a Shurik instead of a Shava. If the initial consonant has a vocal Shava already, then the Vav will take a Shurik instead of a Shava. Look at Ni'arim, young, young men. Adding the Vav at the beginning will take a Shurik because Ni'arim already has a vocal Shiva as the first vowel. So it becomes Un Ra'im, Un Ra'im, and young men. Look at Zeraim, seeds, becomes Uzraim, and seeds, Sifarim books, Usraim, and books, Shmuel, Ushmuel, and Samuel. Now there is one exception to that rule. When the first consonant is a Yod with a vocal Shiva, instead of a Shurik, the Vav will take a Hirik Yod and both Shivas are gone. Look at Yehuda. Adding the Vav becomes Vihuda and Judah. When the initial consonant has a Hataf vowel, remember Hataf being shortened, the Vav will steal the corresponding vowel without the Hataf. Look at Anashim, men. Adding the Vav becomes Va Anashim. Initially, we were working with a Hatef Pathek. So the Vav takes a Pathek. Look at Emmet. Adding the Vav, it becomes the Emmet. So we were originally dealing with a Hatef Segel, so the path, uh, so the Vav takes a Segel. And this means and truth. Look at Khali, sickness. Adding the Vav, we get Vahali. So we were working with a Hatef Kametz, so the Vav takes a Kametz. Now, there is another exception to the rule when we're working with Elohim, God. Instead of the, the Vav taking a uh, Segel, it takes a Tsere. And we do have one other pattern, and that's when the noun is a monosyllable. The most nouns have at least two syllables, but there are some nouns that only have one. Those are monosyllab monosyllabic nouns. In that case, the Vav will take a comet instead of a Shiva. Look at Tzon, sheep. Adding the Vav, we get Vatzon and sheep. Another pattern emerges still with the comets instead of a Shiva, where the noun begins with an accented syllable. Look at Lechem, which means bread. When we add the Vav, we're going to take a comet. Valechem and bread. Just as we saw with the he prefix for the definite article, the vav conjunction is also a prefix. And what's constant is the vav, the vav at the beginning. Sometimes you'll see a shava. Sometimes you'll see uh, a different vowel. Sometimes you'll see a shurik. Sometimes you'll see a hirik yod. But you're seeing a vav at the beginning. So look at the constant. Know your vocabulary, and one of your vocabulary words is the Vav conjunction, and another vocabulary word is the He prefix, the definite article, and the conjunction. Okay, so know your vocabulary. Recognize when you're dealing with a prefix. And when you combine your knowledge of the vocabulary and your recognition of the prefixes, when you look at the context, you should be able to determine what's going on. Context is key.
Now let's talk about the so-called uh, advanced information uh, in our red hymnal here, because uh, you should know what the definite article can do. It's not always going to mean the. Sometimes it can be a demonstrative adjective. Demonstrative, demonstrative, demonstrative adjective. So instead of the, you'll use it as this. Sometimes it's the vocative use. So it's used in the language of direct address. So in titles, in names, instead of the king, you translate it, O king. Instead of the Lord, you translate it, O Lord. When it's used in direct address, there's the superlative use. This is basically language of comparison. This is attached to adjectives and it adds um, a super use, superlative, super use. Instead of the good, it's the best. And sometimes the definite article can be functioning as a possessive noun. So instead of uh, David played the harp, you might translate it, David played his harp. Context is key. You have to look at the definite article in its context to determine how it's being used. Now there may be other usages, usage, usages for the definite article. Consult uh, Jacenius Hebrew grammar for uh, other examples. Now, earlier I did say there's no indefinite article in Hebrew. That's true, except when Hebrew uses the word for one to act as an indefinite article. Ish echad, one man, a man. Isha achach, one woman or a woman. So now we have covered the prefix he and the prefix vav the definite article, and the Vav conjunction. Next week, we are going to dive into prepositions. Don't miss it. Thank you for watching. I appreciate the support. If you haven't already, hit that like button right here. Hit that like button. Also, if you haven't already, follow me on my WordPress. You can also subscribe if you want on YouTube. I don't really care about YouTube, whatever. And don't forget to comment. How are you remembering your vocabulary? What are some of your mnemonic devices? Let me know. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you again next week. Take care.